could we ever become Jedi? It's a little less sciency and a little bit more evolution. So what we know it takes to be a Jedi is certain traits, the Force, midichlorians, and training. Now, not anyone can become a Jedi, right? At least uh, from what we're used to. I know the modern day stories are trying to bend that a little bit, but if we're sticking to the majority of Star Wars stories, not anyone can just become a Jedi. It takes being of Force-sensitive lineage, uh, meaning that your family tree has at least someone who has the Force gene. Uh, it takes a lifetime of training. I'll get into that in a minute. And it also foregoes certain tests to become a Jedi. So, as far as the traits, we know Force sensitives could be identified from birth or at a young age by showing a certain set of skills, such as seeing things before they happen, having above average intelligence, and also having an appreciation of life. We saw this in The Phantom Menace when they first stumbled across Anakin Skywalker. He could see things before they happen. And that's how Qui-Gon Jinn first had the idea that, hey, maybe this kid is Force-sensitive. And then he found out later that he has very high intelligence and he's very knowledgeable about science and the way the world works and his place in it. He was he had a a learning curve. He was on a higher reading level, for lack of better words, than most people of his age group. And he also did have an appreciation for life. His mother, uh, we saw it a little bit with different creatures. He wanted everyone to be treated equally. If you remember in The Phantom Menace, it really did show that of him. And I think that's, for me, I don't think that part's in the book, the appreciation of life. This is kind of just from my point of view. I think if you want to be a Jedi, you have to appreciate all forms of it because you have to connect to your surroundings. Like we've heard in The Empire Strikes Back, it's an energy field that binds the universe together. And having an appreciation for it can help you connect to it and hone in on how to use it for using the Force. So let's talk about the Force. Uh, this might be something that a lot of you don't want me to talk about, but midi-chlorians. Okay. Uh, just for the sake of this being a science episode, let's talk about it because it explains the Force. So midi-chlorians give you the power of the Force. It's that symbiotic life form that lives in the cells and works in unison to pretty much create the universe and people can learn how to control them over time as long as you're from that class of indi individual that has that force sensitive lineage uh, trait now you can have a high midichlorian count but you have to know how to use it and that, that's where the training comes in now this is my theory if you train with the force your entire life that makes you tap into the light side and that's what makes you good in this Star Wars universe. You train at a young age without classical understanding, and that makes you a dark side user. Another same example of Anakin Skywalker. A lot of the council on the Jedi Council thought that Anakin was too old to begin the training, and that could be why he tapped into his dark side in later years of his life, because he didn't get the full understanding, and it was too... Uh, quick uh, to pa of passage to be able to understand it and th there wasn't enough time or patience put in um, so my theory is that if you if you if you show signs from an early stage of life in after birth and you begin your training with masters and, and group training and um, meditation and learn about the force uh, that's that's how you get on the path of being a light side user and once you're past that certain age, which is obviously uh, around that nine-year-old life uh, limit, because that's, I think, how old Anakin was when they said he was too old, um, you don't get that classic understanding, and that's what makes you go to the dark side. A uh, quote from George Lucas says, I put the Force into the movies in order 
to try to awaken a certain kind of spirituality in young people. More of a belief in God than a belief in any particular religious system. So I really like that quote too because he's not saying that there's any one particular way of practicing. It's just that as long as you believe in something, then that's what gives you faith. And that's kind of how the force is. Everyone believes in the force, but it's how they approach it. And that's what makes them light, dark, gray, whatever. Um, So the fact that we could ever become Jedi may not mean that we could move rocks around or, you know, force jump or do mind control. But the fact that we can get to that level of, I guess, um, self-awareness is possible. Being aware of our surroundings having the positive traits of uh, knowing what could happen in the future by the choices you make, having above-average intelligence, just devoting yourself to study and learn and master things that you want to be good at, and having an all-around appreciation of life. Um, So I do believe we could become Jedi but not in the way that we see in the Star Wars galaxy. But having involved science, with future technology adapting, we could use certain machines to make things levitate, to implant ideas into people's minds. And eventually, yeah, maybe we could have a lightsaber, you know? Anything's possible. Who talks first? You talk first. I talk first.